taking a peek at the multimedia screen inside of the Kia Seltos. So there are technically two different options that are available. It's either going to be this smaller 8-inch screen, or there's a larger 10.25-inch one instead. Big difference between the two is that this 8-inch has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The larger one is a wired connection. And then that larger one, though, also has factory navigation, whereas the smaller one just doesn't. So... Those are a few things to consider here, but this smaller screen is going to be standard in some of the base trim levels with that larger one available in the majority of the lineup. But if you want to walk through on the larger screen, you'll find that link down in the description of the video. But let's dive into this one. So first thing to point out, you've got a radio button along the very top. So if you wanted to, you could change out between all of your different presets there. So AM, FM, etc. Media is where you go if you wanted to go between AM, FM, Bluetooth. So if your phone was connected, USB music, so if you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, you'd also be able to use that as your audio source instead. And then if you were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you could listen that way. So that's a nice thing, like you don't have to be hooked up through Android Auto or CarPlay, you could just stream over Bluetooth if you wanted to, which we'll touch on in a second. There's a little star button, and when you push that, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to bring you home, go to Bluetooth audio, phone, phone projection, things like that, so you can customize it if you want. Volume rocker along the left side, you can also turn your audio on or off. A seek button along the top right hand side. And then you can also enter your setup, which gives you a ton of other options that are available. Along the very bottom, you can tune this way if you want to. And then you can also press there in order to kind of enter. But we'll touch on that one as we start moving through the screen. You've got your menu button along the very top in order to ed edit out different widgets. So if you wanted to edit out your home icons, you've got the flexibility to do it. So you could just do a press and drag if you wanted to customize this a little bit. Press back, menu, you also have a QR code, so you can scan that code in order to bring up your, uh, your online user manual instead. From there, you can also edit the left or the right widget, so what's showing up there, and then you can also reset. So if you've played around with this too much and you don't like it, you can just hit reset there to bring it back to the factory default screen instead. You've got current time and date along the very top, and then what station you're currently listening to. And I said you can jump between all of your different presets this way. You can jump in and look at your all menu. So this is essentially everything that's available within the vehicle. Or you saw there, you can kind of do a press and hold if you wanted to be able to adjust these things out as well. So if you wanted to customize the look, the layout, you've got that flexibility. Moving back home, you've got a few other options. So let's kind of dive through and I'll show you how everything works. So we'll go to the all menus first. And I guess we're starting off by adding in a phone. So right there, you can see hands-free calling, Bluetooth audio, etc. So you do have the flexibility if you want to just use the phone for calling, or if you want to use it strictly for audio, or you can do a mix of both. But all you're going to do is hit OK. It's calling the phone. You can see there the name is matched up and the PIN numbers match up, so we're going to pair. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit Don't Allow. I mean, obviously, if this was your, uh, your vehicle, you'd hit Yes there. And then, like I said, one really nice thing is that the Seltos also has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So after you've connected, it gives you the option of saying not now or use CarPlay. But as you can see there on the phone, you can click through and then you've got the phone. That said unsuccessful because I said no earlier. But you've got, if you said yes, you'd have your call history, contacts, there's a dial pad there. You can see the phone name, your battery level, and then your connection status as well. And then on the phone, if you wanted to, you could hit use CarPlay. And then if for whatever reason it's not pulling up, it's because I didn't hit it instantly. What you can do is if you go back home, the workaround, you go to your phone there, you go to menu, Bluetooth settings. So you can get to this option a few different ways, but from here, all you're going to do is hit phone projection and then connect. And that's going to let you connect to CarPlay. So you can see there it's currently connecting and three, two, one, you are fully connected. Now, obviously, if you hit yes right away, it would just have launched you into CarPlay, but I kind of played around with it a bit first. But you've got this full screen CarPlay, which looks really nice. Along the very top left, you can see current time, connection and battery levels, which map application was open last. So right now I opened up Waze last, but if I went into Apple Maps instead, you can see there, it's kind of figuring out where I am. You can search for and look at previous destinations. No pinch to zoom capabilities, but there is light drag and drop. You can go plus and minus if you wanted to go that route, change it to 2D, 3D, and then circle back on yourself. 
if you went into Google Maps, that changes it out. You can search for addresses. You could also avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, things like that. Change out map colors, adjust volumes, etc. And then if you press there, go back home, you can launch into Waze and it's the same idea. So you've got that basic move capability. Press there in order to zoom in and out if you want to. Search for addresses and things like that. Moving back home, this next one is going to be your media or audio. So Live One is a radio app. You've got podcasts. If you were listening to different things, those would show up as available options. And then this bottom one is miscellaneous. So was your calendar open, your phone open, settings open last, etc. This button brings you back home to kind of this like mid screen, and then you can kind of switch across. So it's going to be kind of like your home screen versus this screen instead. So it's nice that you've got that option. You could press the key button if you wanted to go back home instead. And then that's one of the cool things because you could then hit radio. And let's say if you wanted to listen to the radio while you were also going with Apple CarPlay, you would have that flexibility, which is great. And one nice thing on the steering wheel, you can press and hold the voice command prompt if you wanted to activate your Siri assistant there as well. And then on your phone, if you go into general settings, CarPlay, find your vehicle, so Seltos, you can forget it, turn CarPlay off, or you can customize it. So let's say if you're a bigger fan of, well, I don't know, maybe you wanted to listen to your audiobooks and you're a big fan of podcasts, you can just do kind of like a drag and drop. In order to adjust, you can delete apps out. So if you know you're never going to use some of these things, you can remove it and it completely removes it from the via, from the CarPlay here, but it adds it back on. So you could add it back in if you want to, or if you've played around with the settings here too much, you just hit reset, reset layout. And that brings you back to the factory default screen there instead. So very straightforward. And like I said, it is going to be wireless inside of this one, but you could technically plug in through USB if you wanted to go wired instead. It's just that wireless connection is available with the smaller screen. And then you can enter setup there along the very bottom, device connections, and then you've got Bluetooth connections, phone projection, and things like that. So if you wanted to, you could hook back up again. So car, it's unavailable, obviously, because CarPlay is running. So if we go back, phone projection, you can disconnect from CarPlay, go back into Bluetooth, Bluetooth connections, reconnect for either one of these, reconnect, and then you can see there it's connecting back to the phone again. So we've essentially disconnected from CarPlay and we're hooking up strictly through Bluetooth for hands-free calling and then for audio as well. So you can see there are connections there. So I know quite a little bit of info, but that's how you set up an Android or an iPhone device inside of the Kia Seltos. Setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you weren't on the screen, say if you were back on the home screen there, you could press phone there, you can hit setup, device connections, Bluetooth connections, and then you're either going to add or delete a device. So in this case, we want to just go and add a device. Do we want hands-free call in Bluetooth? I'm going to say yes to that. So it's disconnecting from the iPhone. Seltos, pins match up, so let's pair. And we are connected, and same idea. Supports Android Auto, so let's connect to that. Like I said, it's a wireless connection there as well. So it's wireless across the board for, well, for this one, but when you're in the larger screen, it's a wired connection instead. So you could go wireless or wired with the smaller screen. But I mean, look at that. Fully connected there. You can see what's currently going on with your maps. If you're connected for audio, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. So you can push there in order to get to kind of this like split screen view instead or icon view. You could push there to activate your Google Assistant if you want to. But same thing, you could do a press and hold on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your Assistant that way instead. You could pull up maps and then it's a full screen map. And then nice pinch to zoom capabilities. Very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. You can push there in order to adjust your route options about info and things like that. So if you wanted to avoid motorways, toll roads, ferries, etc., you've got that flexibility. Push there in order to get to this split screen. Push there to get to back to this screen instead. You've got your mic there, podcasts, and then what's currently going on with your connection, time, and things like that. A button press to get back to the split screen, back into full screen maps instead. So not quite as much flexibility as the iPhone side, but still pretty nice all at the same time. Now, if you hit setup, this brings us back to this one. Go into device connections, phone projection. Let's disconnect from the Galaxy. So as of right now, neither are connected for phone projection, but if you go back into Bluetooth, 
You could, if you want to, it's trying to reconnect to the galaxy again. Perfect. So Bluetooth audio, so the S9 is connected again. And that's one nice thing because you can adjust here which one's going to what. And the big benefit there is, let's say if you've got all of your music on one phone, but you have just one phone for your phone calls instead, you've got that flexibility to kind of do like a mix and match between any of these four. Then you can also select if you wanted to delete devices, delete, yes. And that deletes the phones from the vehicle. It's that simple to be able to do it. Hopping back, you've got connection priority. So if you have multiple phones connected, it's who's going to get connection priority there. Prompts, and then your system info is the big one here. So if you wanted to change your vehicle name from the default Seltos, you click here, and then you can change the name to whatever you'd like it to be instead. You can also change out your passkey. Something that's not 000 is usually a good idea. And then you've got phone projection there again, but you do need to be connected to either Android or an Android or iPhone using CarPlay or Android Auto in order to use it. But that's how you set up phones inside of the Seltos. Moving back into all menus. So we've already seen phone, phone projection, voice memo. Gives you the flexibility of recording memos inside of a vehicle if you want. You can jump into the radio so you can see there all of the safe presets that are that you've saved so far. You could also, if you just kind of tune to whatever station, let's go 94.9, nice local station here. You can see there, you can save it if you want to, and that saved the preset. You can change between AM, FM along the top, HD radio, or toggle the display off, bring it back to life. You can go through and enter a station manually instead if you want to. So if you're a big fan of listening to certain ones, press in. You can look at station lists, so to see everything that's available. So if you're new to an area, you're not sure what you can listen to, you just go to station list there, and you can see all the stations, and you can save out whichever ones you want to. Pressing back again, you can scan FM, or you can delete presets. So if you've entered one and you're just not a big fan, you can hit delete, delete. And as you can see there, it's, it's deleted that preset. So that's nice that you've got the flexibility to be able to adjust. Media, we saw earlier, you can select what media you're listening to. You can enter a quiet mode, and that's essentially going to lower all of the different audio in the vehicle. So if you've got sleeping kids in the back, there's a QR code there. So if you wanted to scan in for your user manual, and then you can enter setup. And same idea, so you can enter setup a few ways. So let's say if you're back on the home screen, you can kind of go through, you can enter setup there, or button press to get into the setup there instead. Same I did, display off, reorder icons, you can hit your sound settings. So big one there, speed dependent volume. So as you go faster or slower, it's automatically going to adjust the volume out. Startup volume limiter. So if you started it and the volume's super loud when you turned your car off last, it's automatically going to make sure that volume's nice and low. Position of focus. You can kind of tweak it out that way instead if you want to as like a finer focus. The beeping. If that drives you nuts, you could toggle it off there. Your tone. Usually treble down a bit. Bass crank three gives you really good audio inside of this thing. Next up, options for volumes. So you've got beeping, ringtones, alerts, and things like that. And which level do you want all of these things at? So it's great that you can kind of customize each individual one if you want to. You can get rid of radio noise. There's driver assistant warnings. So as warnings come up, it's going to essentially lower all of your different warnings. It's same idea for park safety. So if you're reversing and you're backing up and getting closer to an obstacle, Parking safety priority means it's going to lower all of your volume, so you can hear the beeping as you back up. And then you've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you can adjust the volume for the media or for your voice guidance instead. So if you find things are a little bit too low, you could crank it right through the screen if you want, or just reset it back to default. Leave. Well, that's the basics there. Display, so you can auto-adjust the brightness or adjust it manually if you want. So if you want it darker, brighter, whatever the case may be, or just reset it. You could also... Screen out this way to go to a day or night mode. So what's going to happen is when it's auto adjust, it's going to either increase or decrease brightness depending on how bright it is outside. Blue light filter, very useful for later on at night. So you can make the screen warmer or darker. And then you can also have it come on automatically or during scheduled times. So if you're going to use the blue light filter, do you want to have it automatically come on when it gets dark out? Or do you want, the, or do you want to schedule it when it comes on your, uh, yourself? When you turn the display off, do you want nothing? An analog clock with different watch faces. So when you go to turn the display off, or do you want to have a digital clock instead when you turn the display off? So a matter of preference there. And then you've got options for buttons. So three unique ones. There's the one here, 
and then two on the steering wheel, which gives you the flexibility of doing a few things. Series of general settings. So you've got your basic system information, current date and time. Some of these things are grayed out because it's auto, but if you deselect auto, you can automatically adjust this out if you want to. Which time zone are you currently in? And then daylight savings time, or do you want that military time instead? Language, do you want English, French, Spanish, or Korean? And then which type of keyboard do you want? So QWERTY keyboard, English, Latin default, media options, so you can have it so that your, your radio is off when the vehicle started up. And then you can do a factory reset. So if you played around at the screen too much or you're selling it, you could just do a reset to bring it back to its default screen instead. You've got a basic Wi-Fi connection and then basic climate control settings there as well. So you can recirculate air if you want to, auto ventilate, you can schedule ventilation as well, and that's essentially gonna refresh the cabin. And then you can have it auto defrog defrost for you instead. So I know there's quite a little bit of information there, but that's everything that you need to know about the eight inch media screen inside of the 24 Kia Seltos.